So this Smart Chat app is pretty much finished now. We can uh, register, we can log in, we can see a list of users, see whether they're online or offline, click on a user and we can have a real-time conversation and see these messages appear on both devices in real time. So let's get this app running as a desktop app now. If you're new here, my name's Danny, I'm an indie app developer. And if you want to learn how to create cross-platform apps for iOS, Android, Mac and Windows from a single code base, click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss anything. Now I'm working on a Mac, so I'm going to get this running as a Mac app. So to do this is really simple. I'm just going to jump to the console, close this process, and I'm going to run Quasar dev M for mode electron because Quasar desktop apps use the Electron framework. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run that. Okay, so Smart Chat is now running as a Mac app. And we can see the console over here, which we can undock from this if we want, so that we can debug our app just as if it was a web app. So let's see if it's working. I'll log in. You can see a list of users. You can see our messages. Yeah, all seems to be working. Now I'm just going to customize this a little bit. I'm going to make the window a little bit smaller by default and also restrict how small we can make this because we don't want to really be able to make it this small. So I'm just going to open up the code and you can see it's created this source electron folder. If we go into the main process file and open up electron main.js, we can customize our Mac app in here. So we can set the default width and height of our, what's called a browser window here. So I'm just going to set that to 700 by 700 by default. I'm also going to set a min width property of 700 and a min height property of 700. So that we can't resize this any smaller than those dimensions. Save that. Now this should relaunch. And it's relaunched at those new dimensions. If we try to resize that down, it won't let us, but we can resize it upwards. And we can do a hell of a lot more with Electron apps. So we can do things like customize the menus up here, add our own options to the menus, and add keyboard shortcuts, all sorts of stuff like that. And you can learn how to do all that in my full Quasar course. But for now, I'm just going to leave the Mac version like this. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Now let's get this running as a mobile app. So I'm going to get this running as an iOS app. So to do this, you need to have Xcode installed. And if you're developing on a Windows machine, you won't be able to develop or build your app for iOS. However, you can develop and build your app for Android, but this is quite a bit more complicated and I do cover all that in my full course. But for now, I'm just going to launch this as a iOS app. So I'm going to jump back to the console, clear the process and to launch this in the iOS simulator, we can just run Quasar dev dash M Cordova, because this is going to be a Cordova app, dash capital T, iOS. Great, so Smart Chat is now running as a mobile app. So I'm just going to log in. Okay, so it lets us log in, all right. We have a bit of an issue in the toolbar here. This back button looks like it's in the right place, but this toolbar title and this button look a bit too far up in this toolbar. However, there's a way that we can fix this. I'm just going to jump over to the Quasar site. Uh, I'm just going to search for iOS padding and I'm going to click on this link, iOS tip, status bar and notch safe areas. And this page basically tells us how to solve problems relating to the different amounts of padding that you get on iOS devices, both at the top and in the bottom. And you can see Quasar has already added some padding to the bottom to stop this footer being stuck right to the bottom. And it's also added some padding at the top so that this header isn't squished right to the top behind this notch. However, we also need to add a bit of padding to these items here that we've positioned absolutely. So we can do that with these safe area inset top and safe area inset bottom constants that we can see here. So I'm going to jump back to my app code and I'm going to open up my layout file. So layouts, my layout.view. 
Now you can see our toolbar title and our login and logout buttons are all positioned absolutely with these absolute center and absolute right classes. So I'm just going to add a similar class to this back button. So I'll add a absolute left class. So these should all be in line together now. Okay, now they're all in line together. I'm going to use these safe area inset constants to push these down a bit, but only on iOS devices. So how can we target our style for only iOS devices? Well, we can actually inspect this app by using the Safari dev tools. So if we go to Safari, and I'll just close this window here. If we go to develop and then simulator, and then click on this IP address, then we can see a web inspector for this app. So we can see and manipulate all the elements in our app, and we can see the console, see the storage, local storage, and all that sort of stuff. And by the way, if you don't have this develop menu, you can enable that by going to Safari, Preferences, then Advanced, and then you want to tick this box at the bottom, Show Develop Menu in Menu Bar. Okay, so let's jump back to this inspector. And if we look at the body tag for our app, we have a class here, Platform iOS. And this class will only be added on iOS devices. So we can use this class to target styles just for iOS. And Quasar also adds similar classes for all of the other platforms as well, as well as classes for mobile, touch capability, and stuff like that. But I'm going to use this platform iOS class so we can add some targeted styles just for iOS devices. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my layout.view. I'm going to add some new styles here. So we're going to use that class that we copied, platform iOS. And then within that, we want to target this toolbar in the header. And the toolbar has a class of Q header. And then within that, we want to target our Q button elements and also this title. I can't remember what class the title has, so I'm going to jump back to the dev tools and try and find this toolbar. Okay, so here's the header. Q toolbar, and we can see our buttons. And here's our toolbar. So it has a class of Q dash toolbar double underscore title. So I'll copy that. Jump back to our code. So we want to target Q button elements and this Q dash toolbar double underscore title element. And I'm just going to add some top padding to these elements to push them down. And I'm going to do that using these safe area inset constants. So I'm going to copy these two lines of code and paste them in here. I'm just going to remove these comments. And this should add an appropriate amount of padding to these elements, depending on the device. So on an iPhone X device like this, it'll add quite a bit of padding. But if it's an iPhone 8 or something like that, then it'll just add a little bit. So let's save that. Okay, that's looking good now. Okay, so let's see if this chat page is working okay. So I'm going to click on the message field. Ah, we have an issue here. This virtual keyboard is covering up this uh, message field. So why is that happening? Well, Cordova apps by default use a deprecated web view. And we can fix this by switching to the newer WK web view. So if we go to the Quasar site and search for WK web view, and it says here, switching to iOS WK web view. So I'll click on that. It tells us here how we can install this newer WK web view and solve issues such as this keyboard issue. If you found this video useful so far, make sure you smash the like button. And leave a comment telling me something you've done with Quasar. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install the Ionic WebView plugin. So we need to cd into the source card over folder, which if we just look at our editor, you can see Quasar has created this source card over folder here where our card over project goes. So we need to jump to the terminal, close that dev process. And we want to cd into that source Cordova folder. 
And then we want to run this command to install the Ionic WebView plugin. So I'm just going to copy that, run that command to install that plugin. Okay, that's installed now. And the next thing we want to do is add a preference to our config.xml file. So if we jump back to our code and back to our source code over folder, in the root of that folder, we have a config.xml file. And we use this file to customize our code over apps. So we can add plugins and preferences and stuff like that. So it tells us to put this preference, scroll enabled true, within the platform iOS tag. So the platform iOS tag is there. So I'm just gonna copy this preference and paste that in here. And I'll save that. And hopefully if we rerun the app now, our keyboard issue should be solved. So I'm gonna close the simulator, jump back to the console. I'm gonna jump back up to the parent folder, which is our project folder and run Quasar dev dash M Cordova dash capital T iOS. Okay, our app is now running again in the iOS simulator. So let's see if that keyboard issue is fixed. So I'm gonna log in, click on a user and click on the message field. Great, that issue is now fixed now. So let's see if we can send a message. What's going on? Click send. Yeah, that sent a message. And it also refocused the message field as well. Okay, so that seems to be working okay. Just click on done. Ah, after we blurred that field, for some reason it scrolled us back to the top of our messages instead of leaving us down here. Now, I'm not sure why that's happening, but maybe we could just trigger our scroll to bottom method whenever this field is blurred. So let's give that a try. I'll jump back to our code, back to our page chat page, and I'll scroll down to this Q input component for this message field, and I'll add a blur event to this, which should be triggered every time this field is blurred. And within here, we should just be able to trigger our scroll to bottom method. So let's try that. Put scroll to bottom in there, save that. Okay, so we're at the bottom of our messages. Click in the field, keyboard is shown. We're still at the bottom. I'll send a message. Hi there, click send and I'll click done. Yeah, it's now scrolled us back down to the bottom. Okay, so I can't find any other obvious issues with this app on iOS. So in just a few hours using Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex and Firebase, we've created a real-time chat app from scratch that works on the web as a Mac app and as an iOS app. That's why Quasar Framework is so amazing. However, this app is not production ready yet. And there's quite a few things that you would definitely want to do to make an app production ready, which we haven't covered in this series. So the first one is you really want to add some navigation guards. So if I log out of this web version here, this user is logged out. And if I try and go to the users page at the root of the app, it lets us get there. And if we click on a user, we can get to a chat window with that user. We shouldn't be able to do that when we're not logged in. So you really want to add some navigation guards to stop that from happening. The next thing is you really have to add some proper error handling to the app. So if we try and log in with a user that doesn't exist, let's say bob at test.com, click login, nothing happens. So really you want to add some feedback to show the user that something has gone wrong and you want to handle errors throughout the app. So registering errors, login errors, database reading errors, database writing errors, and all that stuff. Another thing you need to do is add some loading screens to the app. So currently when we click login, there's no feedback to tell the user that something is happening. Now, a lot of the times the user will be logged in quickly, but if the internet is slow, then the user might be left hanging on that page with no feedback to tell them that anything's happening. So you really want to add some loading overlays and stuff like that. 
Another thing that you really have to do is protect your database. So I'm just going to drag out this Firebase. So this database is currently completely unprotected. So anybody can modify or delete data in this database right now. So you really want to add some database rules to protect your database from misuse. Another thing you're going to want to do is to get your app working for Android and Windows as well. So you can really cover all of the major platforms. And you're going to want to customize the icons and splash screens for your app. So if we shut down this card over app, it currently has this default card over icon. And when we click on it to run it, it has this card over splash screen as well. And the same for the Mac app. If we look down in the dock, this is currently using a default Quasar icon. So you're really going to want to customize all of these icons and splash screens. You're also going to want to customize your mobile versions a little bit by adding some Cordova plugins so that you can tap into native device functionality. And you're going to want to customize your desktop apps by doing things like customizing the menu, adding your own menu items on there, stuff like that. Another thing you're probably going to want to do is add a settings page to your app so that users can change settings within the app and make sure those settings persist when they close and restart the app, etc. Another thing you're going to want to do is separate your UX modules into multiple store modules. So currently we have a single store module with all of our methods and data in it. It'd be much better to split this up into different store modules. Say one to handle users, one to handle messages, one to handle authentication or something like that. And finally, you really need to add some form validation to your forms. So currently our login form and register form doesn't have any validation at all. So right now our users can submit this register form without even filling in the name field, or they could submit an invalid email address or something like that. So you really need to add validation to all of these forms in your app. And I'll show you how to do all of these things and much more in my full course on Quasar Framework. Check out this promo video for the course. In this course, I'm going to show you how to use Quasar Framework to build real world apps using a single Vue.js code base and get these apps production ready and deployed to all the major platforms, web, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. My name's Danny. I'm an indie app developer and using hybrid technologies similar to Quasar, I created a cross-platform app called Fudget, which is the highest rated personal finance app on the iOS app store with over 1.5 million downloads. Throughout this course, we'll create a real world app called Awesome To Do. In this app, we can add, edit or delete tasks and mark them as completed. We can also sort tasks by name or date and search through our tasks. It's also gonna have a settings page with two real settings which change the way the app works and which persist when the app is closed and restarted. The app will have its own Firebase backend. Users can register, log in, and see their data sync in real time across all their devices. We'll add icons and splash screens and get this app production ready for the web, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. We'll also cover all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex, and Firebase. By the end of this course, you will be able to create your own real world apps with real backends, which work on all the different platforms. Thanks for watching this series. Make sure you click my head to subscribe. Make sure you grab the source code for this app at dannys.link slash smackchatcode. And if you want to get the full course, you can grab that at dannys.link slash quasar.